This is Billy Tarasio from Modern Law and I Do Over. And today we're gonna to talk about predicting and preparing for divorce. And I know that this isn't a fun topic, but it's one that we unfortunately need to discuss. I am a family law attorney and a divorce expert. I have been practicing family law since 2005. When I was 19, my parents went through a divorce and it, it rocked my world so much. It was so real that it sent me on a path to become a divorce attorney. I've only practiced divorce law, family law, my entire career, and I'm the owner of Modern Law, which is a family law firm here in the greater Phoenix area, and I do over, which is its sister company, the company that is dedicated to providing the 80% of people who represent themselves resources so that they can represent themselves with help, with the very best resources possible. After more than 10 years in family law, and listening to literally thousands of people and then going through my own divorce which I have been experiencing I'm now divorced but it's not an event so I've been going through a divorce and experiencing a divorce and restructuring so what does all of that experience get you a whole lot of opinions and today I'm going to share with you some of them there are certain risk factors and things that I see with couples again and again and again before they get divorced so I want to talk to you about those risk factors and how you can predict whether your relationship is on the rocks. Number one, someone stops wearing their wedding ring or stops wearing their wedding ring all the time. Now, if you were someone who used to always wear your wedding ring and now you find yourself doing it less, could be for a lot of reasons. Maybe you gained weight, maybe you lost weight, uh, maybe uh, you take it off when you go to the gym, maybe the metal's bothering you, maybe you lost it. Who knows, there's a thousand reasons why someone might not wear their ring, but it's a subconscious and psychological sign that you are creating distance or that person is creating distance between you and them. So it's something to pay attention to. Number two, change in passwords. Let's say someone, you or your spouse, have started setting up new boundaries on information. It doesn't necessarily mean someone's hiding anything or someone's cheating. But if you've gone from sharing all of this information to now feeling the need to protect yourself, it is an absolute risk factor and something that could predict you headed for divorce. Number three, what are your habits like? Do you go to bed at the same time? Do you wake up at the same time? Anywhere in your world do, is quality time built in or are you two sort of avoiding each other? Um, if you have habits or patterns that really make you ships passing in the night, something could be going on. There's definitely a lack of commitment. There's a lack of intimacy. There's a lack of trust. Um, something's going on. So that's something to take a look at. Now I've got a couple questions for you that are on a scale of one to 10. On a scale of one to 10, how's your sex life? This is a completely subjective ranking. And notice I'm not asking you how often you have sex. I'm asking you to rank it subjectively because how you feel about your sex life matters a lot. The second question on, one, on a scale of one to 10 is how much fun do you have with your spouse? Do you enjoy doing things together? Do you enjoy going out together? Do you have hobbies that you enjoy together? Do you confide in one another? How's the friendship aspect? Do you laugh? When was the last time you laughed? Do you feel listened to? Do you feel respected? These are critical, critical questions for you to ask yourself. And if these answers are negative, they are risk factors that may predict divorce. Now, lots of couples get through rough times, so I'm not saying that you will get divorced if these are true. I just want you to have the same information that I have, and maybe you can save your marriage. Number seven, and this is important. Do you feel contempt from your spouse when you're fighting? Um, this is perhaps the biggest risk factor, research fact, risk factor. If the two of you fight and you put one another down, you interrupt one another, there's a lack of respect or contempt, you are almost certainly going to end up divorced. And if you're not going to end up divorced, you're probably in an unhappy marriage. So if there's contempt, get into counseling, fix this. If you could fix one thing, fix this. And here's another hypothetical I'd like you to ask yourself. If you won a trip, and you get to go to, let's say, Las Vegas or Napa Valley um, for the weekend. Who do you wanna go with? Do you wanna go with your girlfriends? Do you wanna go with couples? Do you wanna go with your spouse? Do you wanna go by yourself? This question will tell you a lot about the state of your relationship. If going anywhere with your spouse alone is the last on your list, 
That's another risk factor, another something for you to take into consideration. What does the future look like? When you think about what you want in the future, do you share the same goals? Do you share the same dreams? Do you think you can get to your goals and your dreams with your spouse? For instance, um, do you have the same goals on money? Do you have the same goals on how you're raising your kids? Do you have the same values on these very important issues like religion? Um, if, if not, it's gonna make a whole lifetime of a future together pretty difficult. And finally, I'll tell you this. After meeting with thousands of people, the thing that kills couples is failure to fix problems. So there's a problem in your marriage. We all have them, but there's a problem and you communicate it. Maybe it's they're spending too much money and not telling you. Maybe it's they're um, not helping out at home at all. Maybe it's the way that they are interacting with your children that you hate. Maybe it's the relationship that they have with your friends or your family. There's something that really bothers you that you've talked about that doesn't get fixed. And eventually, someone feels hopeless and someone feels like this is never gonna change. I'm, I'm living with behavior that I don't wanna live with or in a relationship I don't wanna live with and at a certain point, you break. And so, what does it mean? If you've got these risk factors, you may not know when or if you're getting a divorce. It may not be up to you. It may not be on your terms. So as much as you think this could, this has been going on for the last you know, five years, it's gonna continue to go on, that's, that may be true, but it may not. What I see is that couples at this breaking point, at risk, are just, it's just one thing. It's one fight or it's somebody is, meets the right person and they've been so broken in their marriage that they fall in love with somebody else. Or, um, or, or the silliest fight is that last straw. And so you may not know when you're getting a divorce and when this sort of thing happens, it may take a life of its own. So the second half of this video is how should you prepare? If you are at risk, if these things that we've talked about are true for you, what can you do? Number one, most importantly, simplify your life. Do not take on new debt. Do not make big purchases. Do not uh, move farther away from friends and family and support networks. This is the time to simplify your life because it'll either make it easier for you to heal your relationship or setting you up for when you have to restructure, how you can do that in a way that is least um, least intrusive to your children and, and, and you know easier on you. Um, so no new purchases, no new big debts. You want to simplify your finances and simplify your life. Take on fewer commitments if you can. Um, net, number two is figure out the state of your affairs, your finances. What do you have for debts? What do you have for income? What do you have for resources? Um, can you pay all of your bills? Can you, could you support two households on the same income you have now? And most of the time the answer is no. But also, if you're getting a divorce, the answer is also you have to. You have to figure it out. So, or you have to decide, okay, I might be getting a divorce, but we're going to have to live together. Um, I see couples a lot of the times where something has happened and they, they, they cannot be in the same house anymore. But, so one person leaves. The person who cannot handle it anymore leaves. But if they don't have a place to go or a plan, they've left their children behind and they can't take them with them unless they go back to the house where they don't want to be with the spouse who's there. So it's a really bad situation that I see people get themselves in again and again and again. So you're going to want to plan in advance wherever possible. So figure out the state of what you've got, figure out where you can live, figure out how you can afford to be in a place where you can have your kids, figure out where you can move to be close to their school so perhaps they can walk, so maybe you need less transportation. These are all the types of things you can think about. Do you have a separate bank account? Save your resources. This is not the time to spend money. This is the time to take a step back and to simplify. I've said that again, that's the theme. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Figure out your property, figure out your debt, figure out your income. Um, some things need to be changed. Now, once someone files for divorce, a preliminary injunction goes into place that prohibits you from changing beneficiaries on, on insurance policies, um, changing uh, health insurance, um, changing really your, your, a lot of what you've currently got. And um, the divorce process can take something like two years for some people. So in the event you get in a car accident and health decisions have to be made, do you want your soon-to-be ex-spouse 
making those decisions. No, if probably not. I'm telling you, divorce brings out the worst in people, and so this is probably not a decision that you would like your soon-to-be ex making about you. So, you wanna change your beneficiaries. Let's say your spouse is bad with money. If, if you die and your life insurance policy goes to your spouse and, and he's gonna spend you know, a million dollars or she's gonna spend all this money, who's gonna take care of your kids? So you wanna start thinking about this and making these changes now. If you are thinking about selling your house and downsizing, I'd say go for it. That might be easier while you're married than while you're going through a divorce. So downsizing is okay as far as big decisions. Upsizing, please don't. Please pause. Please wait. Make sure and check out idoover.life where you can find courses on the family court system and everything you need to know in order to navigate this. Whether or not you end up getting divorced, this information may come in handy for you or maybe a friend.